Hi everybody, in this video uh, I want to uh, talk with you about the first step that are best to make if you want to learn the Grandjeu Lenormand. There are several ways to get closer to the cards and I want to share with you the two best ways to get close to them and to get them to know because it's very important before you start reading them that you know what message the cards are giving to you. Okay, let's start. Let's move on with exploring the cards a little bit more. Okay, you might have seen that uh, the cards have a playing card insert. And so at first sight, it um, it seems that it's very very easy to uh, to learn the cards in the order of the playing card suits. You can do this, but um, in that case it's important for you to know that uh, when you are learning the cards in order of the playing card suits, that you are learning only a keyword. It's better to to set a keyword in connection with the playing card. In that case, it's not important what the other images of the cards are going to tell you. In that case, it's only important to have a keyword in mind. For example, with this card, the Nine of Diamond, it is the typical card for the journey. So in that case, the keyword for the Nine of Diamonds would be journey. This card, the two of clubs, is the card for money. The keyword would be money. The ace of heart would be your family card. The eight of diamonds would be your work card, would be your significator as some people want to say or call it. So it would be generally the work card. The Ace of Diamonds would be your card for messages, news. The Three of Diamonds would be your card for relationship, for connections. The Ace of Clubs is your card for success, for example, and the Seven of Diamonds would be your card for misfortune. So you see that um, there are all typical keywords, you know, from fortune telling or from other card systems. So if you choose at first, and the step to get to know your cards by the order of the playing cards inserts, then you have to connect your card and the playing card with a keyword. And now I'm going to show you um, another important fact about the 54 cards of this game. Okay, now you know that every card of these 54 cards has got a single meaning a single keyword that is connected with the card. But uh, this is of course not the essence of this game. Um, it's just to be seen like an add-on for example, but it's important to know the keywords for each card. Normally the whole game is divided into six different parts. The first part is the part of the person card, the consultant's card, the female and the male consultant. This card is going to be very important. Um, it's a center card um, in a small spread, for example, and uh, from that card you are going to do um, the divination. 
Okay, so the first part of the, the different six parts is that part of the person cards. Okay, now we are moving on with the second part of the game. It consists of these five cards and these cards are telling the story of the Golden Fleece. It's an ancient story and we know that uh, La Lenormand was very uh, uh, passionate uh, with these kind of stories from mythology. So it's not surprising that the cards are telling stories from that history. Just like these five cards, they are talking about the Golden Fleece that has to be conquered. They are showing the start of the story and the ending. You can set these cards in uh, relation to uh, work life or to commerce. Uh, this is uh, the main character of these cards. So it is important when you do a spread and you see mostly the cards of this part of this work part. So the situation of your client or the consultant will be guided by a work theme, for example. So the second part is the story of the Golden Fleece, the ancient story of the Golden Fleece, and it covers the theme of work and commerce. The next part, again, is an ancient uh, story. It is about the war of Troja and it consists of nine cards. You recognize here the famous horse <laughs> of the history. Okay and uh, it is said that these cards are about the right of the stronger over the week. So these cards are showing more situations of conflict, of discord, of betrayal, of jealousy, something like that. And uh, these are unpleasant situations you have to deal with. And uh, so it's more characteristic of uh, social life. These are connected to, to social life, these cards. So the next part, you will recognize these cards easily because they have all almost the same picture. They are showing the laboratory of the alchemist and it's about the thing he is exploring. Some say um, it is the search of a philosopher's stone or the marriage between Béa and Gabatin, a couple from ancient history. So um, these cards are symbols for your private life, for your marriage, for your connections, for your relationships. So every card is a kind of state in your relationship life. And uh, if you see a lot of these cards in a spread, you can be sure that the, the consultant is in a more emotional or love situation, for example. The fifth part of uh, the game is a more bigger part. It consists of 19 cards and it is said about uh, this part that uh, these cards are showing unforeseen events in your life. So this can be positive or this can be negative. It always depends on the, the card that is uh, that is shown, but it's more, yes, it's also about a social life. It's uh, about help, it's about money, um, different aspects in, uh, 
in relationships too or in friendship for example it's not always easy these cards are often showing some heaviness because former social life wasn't that easy in the time um, but in general it is more unforeseen events so it is called this part and the last part is very important part is very famous part of the game um, it's, maybe it's well known these are the cards of our zodiac signs they all are telling a story by their pictures independent from the zodiac sign but the zodiac signs are in that game to determine the time they are giving the order of the time in your spread so it's always important to take a look at if you want to determine the time if you find a card of zodiac signs but if you don't choose to determine the time you need or no in general you need always to take a look at uh, the picture the card is telling you this time thing is only important if you want to set a time frame or if you want to look up when an event that is shown in the cards will take place so then this will be important okay these were the six parts of the 54 cards of this um, divination game so i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you could get a step more close to these wonderful amazing and mysterious cards so if you want to know more stay tuned subscribe to my channel and you will get the news when the new video will be up okay thank you bye